<laughs> okay, so I try to give out the vision that God gave me, and the blower comes by, so um, I stopped because I couldn't, I wasn't sure if you could hear me. I'm out of my screen porch uh, with my cross. <laughs> but I was, I mean, as sad as I was about seeking an answer to God in prayer, I got a, a nice, it was a nice vision. Um, in that, okay, so the vision, what, I'm asking God, am I wrong about these watchmen who are not going to make it because they're living in sexual immorality? Um, another one was just exposed to me by someone calling me and telling me that 48 minutes into their, uh, preaching, they admitted that they had been married for five years supposedly to a horrible woman well God does not allow you to to divorce and remarry just because she was a horrible woman in fact men God commands you to love your wives I was just reading that in um, first Peter first pretty first Peter 3 so you can't just divorce and remarry and preach and be a preacher and and actually you know it's very upsetting because um this is just another one that appears to hear from god and is well loved these are lovable lovable people but i'm thinking that they're very very aware of the rapture and maybe that's the reason why god has delayed because he's wanting them to pay attention to when they say they're living a holy life and repenting, but then they say that they're living in a remarriage. That's not living a holy life and repenting. In 1 Corinthians seven eleven, it says, a man must not divorce his wife. That if you're divorced, you're to remain single or else be reconciled to your spouse. That's 1 Corinthians 7, 11. Um, the same person, um, you know, yeah, it seems like he hears from God. So maybe God's plan, I mean, I went back when I saw this. I, when I got the phone call, I was just so surprised because I had just um, written down the time. 726 Harpazo and um, this was not a person that I watch all the time but it's a person that y'all have recommended to me to watch a lot of the time and the reason why I'm not giving his name is because I've called his church I've left a voicemail on his uh, own extension I have sent an email asking for an explanation um, and I have commented on his um, on his video where he's telling people that they must confess sin and get rid of it, and they must be walking in holiness and righteousness. But then he's living with someone not his wife. He's living in remarriage adultery. Um, so I'm giving him an opportunity to come clean but when I went back and looked at um, an old video of his I think it was like seven years ago I tried to uh, like because I've only been looking at him maybe in the last six months maybe nine months I'm not exactly sure I just had people kept saying oh the, this guy's wonderful we love him and yeah I loved him and thought he was wonderful too but just because you know the rapture's coming doesn't mean that you're going to be taken up. You know, I, I'm, my thing about why so many watchmen are going to be left behind because they're living in sexual immorality, I'm not coming up with this on my own, right? God says whatever we hear from Him, that it has to agree. If the Holy Spirit speaks to us, it has to agree with what the Bible says. So the Bible says... Oops, 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. Okay, you're looking at it right there. 1 Thessalonians 4. How many watchmen know these wonderful, exciting 
encouraging words. We tell you this directly from the Lord, that we who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. That is not earthly trumpets, folks. That's the trumpet call of God. Uh, a lot of people who are really into the Hebrew roots, they get hung up on that thing right there. Just pay attention to that. First, the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be Harpazo. I'm pretty sure the number is 726. It's been a long time since I've looked it up. Harpazo caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. So where is the problem? Well, when you read a passage that's a feel-good passage like that, you have to read the context. And the context of 1 Thessalonians 4, and it's really pretty easy to read all of 1 Thessalonians, but as I've got it right there, right there, let me go back a little bit before into 1 Thessalonians 3. May he, as a result, God the Father and the Lord Jesus, this is the prayer, may he, as a result, make your heart strong, blameless, and holy as you stand before God our Father when our Lord Jesus comes again with all his holy people. So that's talking about the second coming of when Jesus comes down with the, the saints uh, for the second coming. And I had in my notes that this is the first time in the New Testament that God and Jesus are put together. Which I guess is verse... Oh, it's a 311! Ha! Huh. Because that's one of our watchmen that is not going to be taken because he's living in sexual immorality of divorce and remarriage. Um, but he loves 311. May God our Father and our Lord Jesus bring us to you very soon. And may the Lord make your love for one another and for all people grow and overflow just as our love for you overflows. May he as a result make your hearts, because we love from the heart, we love Jesus' commands. May he make... May he, as a result, make your heart strong, blameless, and holy as you stand before God our Father when our Lord Jesus comes again with all his holy people. Now we move into chapter 4, which precedes the rapture. Finally, brother, live to please God. Live to please God. That is living to be a holy person. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God. As we have taught you, you live this way already, and we encourage you to do so even more. For you remember what we taught you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like pagans who do not know God. You can even talk about knowing God and being intimate with God, but are you really if you're having sex with a woman who is not your covenant wife? No. Then isn't it interesting that right after it says that, verse 6 says, never, never harm or cheat a Christian brother in this matter by violating his wife. For the Lord avenges all such sins as we have solemnly warned you before. I am solemnly warning. God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules, God gives the rules, is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God who is given his Holy Spirit to you. And it goes on talking about the rapture. 
Okay, so in this case, this person knows a lot about Hebrew and a lot about the rapture. But I was looking to see what kind of preacher was he years ago. I think I went back uh, maybe five or six years ago. And he was complaining about not being a Joel Osteen, which is good. Joel Osteen is the prosperity gospel. But he only had a very, very few people in his church. And he was talking about how people left his church. And that it hurt him that they left. But I think, I mean, it really, I just went and picked one video from a long time ago to look at. And I believe that that's the reason why they left the church. Because a pastor and a teacher has to live. They're a hypocrite if they don't live according to God's word. And even if you look at the Jewish Bible, God hates divorce. Malachi 2. And the person who is preaching is a hypocrite if they don't live by what God has to say. Um, Matthew, Jesus says in Mark 10 and Luke 16 that if you divorce and remarry, it's adultery. Y'all, I'm, I'm not holding people to a different standard than the one that I'm living by. Is it a, it's, not a, a, it's not a fun club to be in to be a stander for God's word and to remain single or else be reconciled to your husband. It's not a fun club to, to pray every day for, um, since, since I got born again, 13 years, pray every day for your husband to repent and come back to God's marriage. It doesn't matter what the other person does, you know? It doesn't matter how many times he gets remarried or how many affairs he has. I don't want to be found unclean, unholy, unrighteous. I've, I've been blessed. I've been blessed by this. But it's a hard teaching and it's peop and particularly difficult because online churches they don't they don't have any accountability way of holding the pastor to account we know that this pastor has i still believe it looks like he has very few uh, actual uh, physical congregants i think that it looks like from his video i mean like one of his videos uh, you know now maybe he gets three or four thousand views in a day um back when they left his church. His video that I was watching, it had it had 59 views over six, five or six years, five or seven years, something like that. I don't remember the date. Um, and he's a really wonderful man. But maybe those people in the church actually tried to love him by doing 1 Corinthians 1. Excuse me, 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 5 is church discipline. And you can't run from it. It says, Paul says, I can't believe that your church isn't doing anything about this. That the church, I mean, that's why I felt a responsibility to call and email and um, put in comments. And I wasn't the only one. There were other people that caught it. Um, it says that... We are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer, claims to be hearing from God, teaches the Bible, teaches Hebrew, does apparently wonderful things, and are very lovable people, yet indulges in sexual sin, or is greedy, or worships idols. Um, idolatry is can be a lot of different things, including... Um, Well, idolatry can be a lot of things, but if God doesn't have your total surrender, that really, if they came to cut your head off, would you be willing to cut your head off? I mean, yeah. Idolatry 
if you love yourself and actually if you you're supposed to love Jesus you're supposed to love your spouse your children uh, unbelievers you're supposed to love everybody and then yourself is supposed to be the last or is abusive or is a drunkard uh, getting drunk on occasion is not being a drunkard a drunkard is someone who is loving loving their alcohol instead of loving it's, it's a form of idolatry or cheats people lies to people you know God says all liars go to the lake of fire if you say that you're living this life and it's not true that makes you a liar and a cheater it says don't even eat with such people it isn't my responsibility to judge outsiders we don't judge the world the, the world is lost but it is certainly your responsibility to judge those inside the church who are sinning so if you're saying I'm judgmental I'm saying God tells me that I'm supposed to be judgmental because I love them actually because I love them judge those inside the church who are sinning God will judge those on the outside, but as the scriptures say, you must remove the evil person from among you. Now, um, it's, it says, uh, also, it says that we're supposed to be feeling bad about this person's sin and their hypocrisy and claiming to be a believer, but they're not living in all respects. They're living in sexual immorality in this case. It says we're supposed to, this is crazy, I know. It says in verse 5 of 1 Corinthians 5, You must throw this man out and hand him over to Satan so that his sinful nature will be destroyed and he himself will be saved on the day when the Lord returns. Well, is that talking about the rapture or the second coming? I'm thinking possibly these men who are... Um, and then, I mean, I mean, read your Bible, folks. <laughs> read your Bible. Because, <laughs> right, I mean, I'm looking on the same page as 1 Corinthians 5, which says not to associate with someone who claims to be a believer but who lives in adultery. In this case, remarriage adultery. You know, I've got 60 videos on a playlist about the truth and about testimonies. And I know, I know a lot of people just tune out right here, but I'm, do I'm doing this because I love people and I love this man and y'all there are pastors who have realized their error error <laughs> I can't say it and they've gotten out of it um cadz.net they have testimonies of of a pastor why I repented of remarriage adultery why I repented of teaching uh, a, a false gospel that you can be divorced and remarried and that God's okay with that um, and then it says in verse uh, 12 of 1 Corinthians 6 it says you say I'm allowed to do anything but everything is good for you and that even though I'm allowed to do anything I must not become a slave to anything and then it goes on and talks about food but it says but you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord, and the Lord cares about our bodies. And just as God will raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised our Lord from the dead, don't you realize that our bodies are actually part of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? For the scriptures say, this is what the scriptures say, the two are united into one. But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your marriage and then it goes straight into there into 1 Corinthians 7 that says you're married for life 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Y'all, think about it. Back in Moses' day, there were uh, people that were able to even turn the Nile to blood. There are people that in Matthew 7, 21 through 23 that are casting out demons and healing in the name of Jesus and prophesying in Jesus' name. But Jesus says, you're going to go, you're not going to make it because you continued in lawlessness. What is the lawless, lawlessness here is the law of marriage, which Jesus says is one man to one woman for life. So you got married for five years and you were unhappy. You're still married. You're not divorced. So if you're living with someone else, in God's eyes, it's adultery. That's why Jesus said, that's why when the, when the disciples heard it, they were like, well, goodness gracious, Jesus, it's better never to get married. Because Jesus said in Mark 10 and, Mark, uh, and Luke 16, he said it's one marriage for life and that anyone who divorces and remarries commits adultery. People will say, oh, well, that's just a one-time sin. Okay, if you, even if you said it was a one-time sin, what does repentance look like? What does repentance look like? Repentance is to leave the sin and give it up. Confess and forsake it. To ask for forgiveness and go and sin no more. To confess and be cleansed of all unrighteousness, not to keep on sinning in your sex life. And how can we say, oh, it's okay to be divorced and remarried? Well, if we're going to say it's okay to be divorced and remarried, that that sexual immorality is okay, then we have to say that porn addiction is okay. Then we have to say... Um, homosexuality is okay then we have to say uh, premarital sex is okay uh, we have to say living together is okay we have to say um, oh you want to marry uh, a goat that's okay bestiality is okay you see it's a slippery slope and God's standard is a very high one but I, what I started to say in my other video was like I don't want to be a false teacher because teaching the Bible can bring extra judgment to me if I get this wrong. So when I saw the vision after many days of seeking God and um, Him showing me scripture after scripture, I mean, I got up even at 5 this morning and I was, um, I'm like, God, please tell me if I'm wrong. Please tell me if I'm wrong. And I wanted to hear His voice. But instead, I had a vision, and the vision was of a, uh, a blue and black letters, which I knew to be the Bible, and it was, I couldn't read any of it. It was moving, like it was like scrolling up the screen very, very fast. And it was blue and black. It was not uh, red and black. And it's scrolling up the screen very, very fast. That was the vision. It was a closed-eyed vision, by the way. Um, and so I woke up and I thought, there is my answer. From the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, God has said Adam and Eve were married. And they didn't get to have other... Adam didn't get to have multiple wives. That's where it got all messed up, right? And then in the Old Testament, when all these people had these multiple wives, and, you know, they were still God's, you know, like, I don't know, I'm not going to go there. Let's just go, the, because of the vision, I'm going from beginning to end. Beginning, God says, I created Adam and Eve to be married, to be one flesh for, until I decide, until death to depart. That's why we make these vows, because that's what the Bible says. And then at the New Testament, Jesus says, if you divorce and remarry, it's adultery. And back in the Old Testament, for adultery, you would have been stoned. But in the New Testament, 
there is grace to confess it and stop living in adultery. And then at the end of, you know, if you read the last of the Bible, um, Revelation 21, 8, Revelation 2, they clearly say that if you live in sexual immorality, you will go to the lake of fire, you will be kept out from heaven. So the whole Bible tells us what, what Jesus expects. He expects genuine repentance which proves the fruit of having the Holy Spirit. Um, Galatians 5, 19 through 21 represents those who are in sexual immorality will never inherit eternal life. It doesn't matter how much you think you hear from God. And I don't know, maybe God is speaking, but I don't think that this person is listening in all areas of his life. I pray that maybe some of you will also want to um, be like a Nathan and say, you know, David, this is your sin. And I, I hope that you will repent. I pray that he will. I pray that he will respond to someone. Um, but I had to speak up. I haven't had a vision in a long time. And I love Jesus, and I love Jesus, right? He is the Word made flesh and dwelt among us. And this is my love letter from Him to show me the way I'm supposed to live, the way I'm supposed to teach. And as, it, as I'm teaching the Word, I have to preach the truth. I have to teach the truth. I hope you listen. Okay, now tomorrow I get to go to the hospital and be with the people in ICU waiting, the ICU waiting room. Lexi just popped up here like she knew that we were going, but it's tomorrow, not today. You thought the way I was talking back in my joyful self? <laughs> you know, there is great joy actually with being, uh, with being in the fruit of the spirit. Uh, maybe I should just read it. Because it just made me think of it. Um, First Corinth, oh, excuse me, Galatians five. You know, actually, um, oh well. I mean, I just love the Bible. I can get in here and just like, let's go. <laughs> Let's read some more. Okay, but let's go to uh, uh, Galatians 5. It's um, freedom in Christ. The freedom in Christ is the freedom to be a slave, not to sin, but a slave to the Spirit. But we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive the, the by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. Okay, I do need to bring this up, actually. And also, um, I'm just going to show the Bible here. Right there is the law of Christ. That's what we're under. We're under the law of Christ. And Galatians 5. All right. Okay. Oh, what do I have over there? I don't know. Let's see. All right. Um, let me finish reading Galatians 5, and then I want to tell, say something else about the sexual morality. Because it says, because it's saying, do we need to be circumcised or not? No, we don't. Okay, actually, let me go there now. In Acts um, 15, the Jews were wondering about the Gentiles coming in right and being believers and what did they need to do for them um they baptize them they re you know they repent and then they're baptized for the remission of sin that word remission means you stop doing it right true repentance 
is faith. You get baptized to show the whole world that you are. That's another thing. I didn't see any baptism stuff going on in that church, which kind of tells me something. But Acts 2.38 says there is an order. You repent and you're, be, you're baptized and then your sins are forgiven. And they're, you're washed clean to walk in a new life that is obedient to Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Jews were um, accepting now these Gentile believers. And in Acts uh, 15, 22, they were asking, what do we do? Um, do we make these Gentiles um, get circumcised, for instance? And there were three things that they had to do. They had to abstain from eating food offered to idols. That would be idolatry. Um, from consuming the blood or the meat of strangled animals. And from what I understand, um, our meat today is not strangled. It, I mean, in the butch, I, you know, you go there if you want. But um, I did study it because I was like, oh, does that mean I'm not supposed to ever have a steak again? But it's not a strangled animal. It, it, from what I understand, it's a, uh, in the butchering process, it's not a strangled animal. So that's okay. You know, I mean, really. So th this is the reason why I say, you know, it's okay if I wear makeup and jewelry. Because um, I'm not wearing makeup and jewelry to get a man. Okay? I'm not worshiping makeup and jewelry. I just happen to live in the South where people... Uh, Especially people, they would think I'm a John the Baptist that is wearing uh, camel hair and eating locust and honey, okay? Because I preached the John the Baptist message, basically. Um, John the Baptist was beheaded for this, right? John the Baptist, he told him, he told Herod and Herodias, y'all are living in an I illegal marriage. And so, they got, they killed him. Um, so, you know. I want to preach the message of John the Baptist, but I want somebody to listen to me, right? And anyway, so no eating food offered to idols, idolatry. No uh, consuming blood from strangled animals. And then there you go. No sexual immorality. Those are the three things, the three commands that the Jews, the Gentiles were told to do when they first started following Jesus. Now, in the Great Commission, when Jesus left, he said, teach your disciples, you baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then teach the disciples to obey my commands. So, that's a clear command. How can you say you're a man of God who's hearing God, and you're not making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey his commands and that includes the command to not be in sexual immorality back to galatians 5 <laughs> sorry um i am trusting the lord it says it says a little false teaching is like a yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough which you know that's why this is so concerning because it takes one false teaching to like make the whole message false um, I am trusting the Lord to keep you from believing false teachings God will judge that person whoever he is who has been confusing you and then it goes on and talks about being persecuted and that we should be expecting persecution so read read Galatians 5 it's about our freedom in Christ to obey the law of Christ then I'll just I'm gonna I'm gonna try to end it here. When you follow, it says, but when you are directed by the Spirit, you're not under the obligation of the law of Moses. The law of Moses allowed for divorce and remarriage. The law of the Spirit does not. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear: sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, wanting to be popular and liked, dissension, division, enviness, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. And here's the, ki the clincher. Let me tell you again, as I have before, 
that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Will they be given another chance after we, who, are, who have kept holy, are the, considered the, the righteous and are first, lesson, third, first Thessalonians 4, we're out of here? I believe that they'll get saved as tribulation saints. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. The fruit shows the root. If the root is right, the root produces good fruit of walking in righteousness, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, that means including being faithful to your spouse, gentleness, and self-control. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and the desires of their sinful nature, wanting to get divorced and remarried, to the cross, his cross, and have crucified them there. Dead to sin, alive to Christ. We leave our old sins nailed to the cross. We don't keep on going back to them. That's not being forgiven. That's claiming forgiveness. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Oh, goodness. Y'all can do it. I know you can. If anybody stayed and watched this this long, God bless you. You probably believe the same thing as I do about staying out of sexual immorality. I am, I'm excited. I see a lot of stuff happening uh, that we may be leaving in, uh, in some very, very few more days. But today's the day. If you are living this way, in any of those ways of sexual morality, repent today. And you, if you truly are sorry for your sin, He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He will nail that sexual morality to the cross and leave it there. Leave it there. Don't pick it back up. Don't become a slave to, to your old sinful nature. Walk in newness of life in light of the law of Christ which he earned on the cross. Be born again. When you're born again, you don't want to do things that your sinful nature desires. You can't stop thinking about the one you love the most, who is Jesus Christ. I hope something I said spurs someone on to, to making a change today. Or, if you already believe as I do, maybe you will help me in um, trying to help a brother who is looking for the rapture actually make it. First Thessalonians 4, God's holy people are the ones who are going to be caught up. It's not whether you say you're holy, it's whether you are having a holy life. I love you, I do, I'm so sorry that this has happened again. But I have to be obedient to God when he shows me. And that was a pretty... Oh, oh, and the reason why I saw... It was so funny when I woke up, I was like, why did I see a blue and black lettered Bible? And then I remembered, oh, there's something called a blue letter Bible. And I couldn't remember what it was that it said. Uh, uh, or I never used blue letter Bible. I used Bible Gateway. And uh, I, so I went to go look up, why are you called the blue letter Bible? And it says that the reason why they did was because their vision had always been to provide a free Bible study software in which the Bible is the center of the experience with study resources that link off every word in the Bible. I, I, I use Bible Hub, but I'm thinking this is very similar, that every word has a number and strong. It's like 726. I'm pretty sure 726 is, um, is uh, Harpazo. And I also looked at their, um, what their belief statement was, and um, they have seven different 
statements of their faith. Um, but number one is the Bible is the inspired and inerrant and only infallible author authoritative word of God. Bible, the Bible is inerrant. It's not a suggestion. It, it is, it's God's word. Breathed out without error. Our problem is that we don't do what it says. We don't understand it in our sinful nature. We have to have the Holy Spirit make it come alive to us and convict us. The Bible is supposed to, the Holy Spirit is supposed to convict us of our sin and the Bible is supposed to convict us of our sin, not just that we read it and know it and study it. No, I mean, you realize there are tons of people in seminary, tons of people on college campuses that are teaching religion classes that are totally lost, totally lost. They have knowledge without the Spirit. And then verse, uh, their fifth, um, well, their fourth one is that we affirm that for the salvation of lost and sinful people, regeneration by the Holy Spirit is absolutely essential. That's being born again. Regeneration. Old self, nailed to the cross, dead and buried, raised to new life. And then number five is we affirm the present ministry of the Holy Spirit by those by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live the godly life. Uh, I'll put a link into their statement of faith, but um, I guess that's why God gave me the blue letter. I guess. I don't know. It was, it was funny. And I do put in a lot of my comments. I put in um, links to uh, Bible verses. So, um, I think God was just saying, Terry, you're on the right path. It's a narrow, 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 narrow path. <laughs> it's not necessarily a fun path to be on, but there will be eternal reward. I love everybody. Bye-bye.